Hello everybody, my name is Alexander Spiridonov. I am, I am a BSMS mechanical engineering student at NJIT and this is a quick lesson on Runge-Kudo fourth order method aimed specifically on showing how to solve a second order ODE using this method. In this lesson I will cover what Runge-Kudo method is, how it applies to numerically solving first and second order ODEs, and I will show some pseudocode to illust illustrate how to approach the programming aspect or implementation of the runge kuda fourth order method. runge kuda is a weight average slope method for numerically solving a differential equation. This differs from the simpler Euler method of integration where the slope of a function seen here is simply multiplied by the time step in order to get the change in position. Then you take that change and add it to the current position. Runge Kuda, on the other hand, uses a weight average of four slopes in order to obtain the change in position, as can be seen here. Now let's take a look at how you would so use Runge Kuda to solve some arbitrary differential equation. Here we have ax dot plus bx equals f of t. This is just a simple function to be used as an example. First thing you need to do is isolate the x dot term and turn it into a function of time and position. As you can see here, for in our case, the slope is equal to f of t minus bx over a. Then once you have that function, you can now calculate the individual slopes. The first slope is simply the slope at current time and current position. The second slope is the slope at a half time step ahead and the first slope is used to approximate the position at half time, a time step ahead. The third slope is similar to the second one. It's also a half time step ahead, but you use the second approximation for the slope in order to approximate the position. For the fourth slope, the slope is evaluated at a full time step ahead and you use the third slope approximation to get an approximation of the position. You then take the weight average of all the four slopes and multiply it by the time step in order to obtain the change in position. Then you take that change of position and add it to the current position. Here's a pseudocode example of runge kudo fourth order method to solve the equation x dot plus 5x equals sine of t. And you'd want to integrate it over 0 to 1 time range with a time step of 0.01 and the initial condition is x at a time of 0 is equal to 0 and you also want to record the values of t and x. So the way you would do that is first you isolate the slope and get it as a function of time and position. So here we define a function that's a function of time and position and it's equal to sine of t minus 5 times x. Then you declare your initial time, the final time, the time step, the initial position, and then, before you start doing the iteration, you assign current position, you assign initial position to current position, and then you iterate the loop from initial time to final time, and you increment the time by the time step first thing you do in the for loop is you record your time and position. The reason why you do that at the top of the loop is because at the bottom of the loop you will 
the position will already have advanced to the next step. So all of your positions would be one step ahead. You calculate the slopes, take away the average of them, and get the change in position and add it to your current position in order to obtain the next one. For to solve a second order differential equation with the runge kuda fourth order method, you substitute an intermediary intermediary term, in this case v, for x dot, and then the equation, the one I'm using, changes to v dot plus av plus bx equals f of t. Now you can split the second order differential equation into two first order equations. By definition, speed is the slope of x speed is the slope of position. So therefore the change in position is slope times the time step. And then v dot is the slope of v and we can manipulate the differential equation to get the slope of v as a function of time, position, and velocity. In our case that would be f of t minus av minus bx. And then you just repeat the Runge-Kuda method for x and v. Please note, however, that the time step has been distributed into individual slope approximations. Here are the references for this lesson. The book by Boysen de Prima is an undergraduate book that is commonly used as an intro to differential equations. The Zillin Wright book is used as an overview for grad students about the math they should have learned as undergrads. The McCracken and Salmon book is an excellent book on Fortran 77, however I should mention that probably the reason why I think it's good is already because I already know programming so also I should mention that Fortran 77 is a pretty old language and if you want to learn Fortran you should learn 90 or 95. Finally the lecture by Professor Chan is where I learned how to use the Runga Kuda fourth order method for second order differential equations. Now we can move on to a pseudocode example of the runge kuda fourth order method applied to a second order ODE. As a control, I'm using the same ODE I got as a MATLAB project in the course. This way I can take the Fortran code and compare its results against the MATLAB results which I know were correct. The ODE was x double dot plus 2.48 x dot plus 4.48 x equals to a force function of t, which is a piecewise function defined as shown. The first step is to substitute the intermediary term into the equation. And then you obtain the slope of v, or, or v dot, as a function of time, position, and velocity, in this case force of t minus 2.48 v minus 4.48 x. Now that we've completed the setup, we can take all the information we have and start writing the code. In the pseudocode, we first define the force function. We can use if statements to differ between the piecewise pieces of the function in different ranges of time. Then, we define the function that is the slope of v. Then, we declare all the boundary conditions, such as the range of time, the time step, the initial position, and initial velocity. Now we perform the loop that uses the RK4 method to solve for the changes in x and v over the range of t initial to t final with the time step h. Please note once again that you output all your variables at the... Here is an example of the code written in Fortran as you can see here, here I define my force function as a function of time and 
between 0 and pi over 2, it's 2.48 times the sine of time. Then I'm using a bunch of other if statements to differ between the piecewise function, the, the pieces of the function. Then I define my slope of v function as a function of time, position, velocity, and its force minus 2.48 velocity minus 4.48 position. Then in the main body of the program, I define my initial condition in the range. I define all the values. Before the loop, I assign initial position to current position and initial velocity to current velocity. Then from initial time to final time with an increment of h, or 0.2 in our case, I perform a loop. First, I output the time, the time, force, position, velocity, and acceleration. Then I calculate the slopes, and then I add the weight average of the changes in position to the current times and positions. And that's it. Now, originally this was a MATLAB project, and I have the output from that MATLAB project. So these are all correct numbers, and these are numbers that the little Fortran program gets. So if you look, all the numbers are the same. Let's look at 3.4. At 3.4 you get 3.04. It's the same here. All the numbers are the same, so it's good. Now, I'm not going to show the MATLAB code because odds are someone would want to just copy it for their project. So that's that. Thank you.